Hey everyone, uh, Joshua Nagelberg, Carolina Weather Authority Meteorologist. I wanted to give you guys the latest on the tropics here at the State of the Tropics Union for you guys. And uh, we did uh, finish, looks like we're going to finish the month of June here. Um, a little on the quiet side, but it is June after all. But we've already gone through four named storms through the month of June, and that is <laughs> not really good news. Um, typically on this pace, we're talking about... Um, double-digit numbers of storms, maybe even over 20 named storms this season. Um, if you do have a chance here, real quick, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, Carolina Weather Authority, click the subscribe button. You're going to get the latest from us, of course. And please visit us at carolinawsauthority.com. Uh, we're talking about July 4th. We're talking about daily forecasts, maybe our local severe weather. And, of course, we do have tropics. And the uh, latest updates, we are continuing to feel that this is going to be the year that we are going to be potentially under the gun anywhere from the Gulf Coast up to the mid-Atlantic states with a major hurricane. And maybe not just one, we could have multiple storms. And I'm going to get to why in just a little bit here. Here's our, our article, and we have not changed our forecast just yet. 15 to 20 named storms, 8 to 12 hurricanes, 4 to 7 major hurricanes. And this pace puts us in the top 10 over the last 100 years, and we could end up being really in the top two or three uh, before all said and done from what I'm looking at. Again, a little too early to give you an exact number and where, um, but we are thinking that the um, northern Caribbean islands and up to Florida are going to definitely be under the gun at least once. The central Gulf of Mexico looks like a hot spot, and here in the Carolinas we are likely to be um, in the th mix of things as well. The uh, satellite image from this weekend doesn't look all that impressive. Things are kind of quiet in the tropics, but, uh, and the reason for that, too, is you've, you've probably seen all the Saharan dust articles out there. Uh, this is the Saharan dust coming up and through, and that's kind of giving us some hazier skies. That's eventually going to get kicked off to the east and not really going to be an issue for us, and it's really nothing unusual. Uh, but what we are likely to start seeing uh, is some two areas that could develop here slowly over the next few days. Uh, the first one may develop over the central Atlantic, and I'll be honest with you, I don't really think this thing has a chance of really surviving. Um, it's something that they'll be monitoring down in Miami, but I'm really not too concerned about it. Um, the area that could maybe surprise us follows in the wake of Dolly from last week, and this could be Edward by the time it gets all the way up in here. And um, I'll tell you as well why I'm thinking this area is going to see a lot more activity than usual. And that doesn't really impact us, but it does pad the numbers that we're looking at. So that's definitely something to watch. And it's probably going to be till midweek before this even becomes an issue, but just something to keep an eye on. Uh, now what we've seen, and this is cause for concern, um, but it's not a surprise really, over the last seven days the waters have warmed up considerably. This is Celsius, and we're talking a three or four degree warm up off of the outer banks. Temperatures have warmed almost 10 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in just the last seven days. And it really hasn't been that blazing hot. It's been pretty seasonable, I think, you know, near 90 most days. Um, maybe just because it was so cool the last few days before it. Um, there's a lot of ocean heat content across this entire region. This is just at the surface. That's not what's going on down below. Uh, but definitely things are warming up, and that may be a precursor as well as to what's going to be a quick warm-up coming here in July. And in fact, um, much of the Atlantic Basin is at or above average sea surface temperature-wise with the northern Atlantic being the hot spot. And the only reason this area is cool here near Bermuda is that we had a, a tropical storm form last week that was dolly up in here. Uh, it should start to rebound again, and the trends are not our friend. I'm also watching Africa right now. We had our huge area of dust come off last week, and that has traversed the ocean. But look what we've got behind it. This is the Sahel region south of the Sahara, uh, north of the equator, and it is starting to ramp up here. It's only the end of June. And we're already looking at, for these poor folks in Africa, a lot of uh, deluges, a lot of very heavy rain. And we're going to see wave after wave after wave come across. And, you know, in the shorter term, probably not much will develop. But in the longer term, if this pattern keeps up, we definitely have our eyes on what could be a busy year. Um, this isn't going to mean a lot to you, but this is kind of a look at our upper level um, convergence and divergence and sinking and rising air. Air that diverges aloft is typically rising. It's got to come up and then go out. And uh, these areas will be in the green here. Areas of air that converge and sink are in the brighter colors. Now, we want to see greens if we want developing storms. So in the next 10 days, we still have a, a decent chance of some rising air and some development coming off of Africa. 
And then towards the middle of July, things are going to trend towards maybe more sinking air. However, in the Western Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, at the end of July and beginning of August, I do think we will see our first hurricane. If I had to pick a date, you know, I would say July 30th could be our first hurricane. Somewhere in that time frame, it, you know, give or take 10 days. Uh, but the trend towards August is for more rising air in the Atlantic and more sinking in the Pacific. This goes with our forecast, with our La Nina, with our, um, with our um, just general trends and that we're going to have a wet and unsettled hurricane season by August. And again, uh, in the shorter term, we're looking for, this is um, the anomaly. So um, the more greens we see, the more rising air than average. Uh, the more reds, the more sinking air. So the greens, what promote um, more development of, of tropical systems. And notice how it looked like it might be favorable in the Atlantic right through the end of the month of June. It starts to trend in the direction of more sinking air by July. So I think our first half of July is not going to be super active. Um, it's going to be the second half, and especially towards the end of the month is when things ramp back up. The European Weekly does show a lot of rain here for the next uh, six weeks coming off of Africa, and this is Hurricane Alley, our main development region. A lot of tropical waves, and this is the area I'm watching for maybe our first hurricane to develop by the beginning of August. We're also watching the Western Gulf. Notice how wet it is here in the southeast. Uh, unfortunately, that's been our forecast all summer. It's been warm and wet. And uh, look how busy things could be off of the Atlantic coast and um, more potential tropical activity up in here than down in here, believe it or not, is, is uh, what we're looking at. Uh, temperatures in the Atlantic are forecast to remain above average for most of the season, with the exception of maybe in this area. But again, this is just one climate forecast system model. By the way, the western and northern Gulf are forecast to not be quite as warm. And that could be um, a sign that we may have a fair amount of big storms in here that kind of upwell that water and cool it a little bit. Uh, but things are definitely favorable for multiple storms. Um, you know, this definitely supports a lot of big storms potentially in this region and here. That's why we've circled it on our map. And our precipitation anomalies for July and here August and September are quite wet in this region, also down in here. And October and, December and November are still potentially pretty active down in here. Um, again, I'm not following too closely the yellows um, in the southeast. This could end up down here, could end up up here. Uh, but I'm watching are the main tropical developed regions. Those are in here and in here. And as long as they stay wet, they show uh, some active tropical um, activity this season. Finally, I'll show you the wind shear anomalies. The blues are less wind shear than, than average, and the uh, bright colors are more. Uh, so in August, um, we do see lower than average wind shear right across this region here. And that could be uh, areas to watch for storms to get up in here and develop quickly in the major storms. September, um, same deal across South Florida, the Gulf of Mexico, this area. Anything that gets up in here could develop quickly. And October, look at that, off the southeast coast. Um, any storm that comes up here could go to town. So, again, we've got a lot of ingredients in place for an active tropical season. And uh, keep it tuned here for the latest. Please subscribe to Carolina Weather Authority on our YouTube channel. And it's been a pleasure sharing with you guys the latest here. And um, we'll keep you posted. So everyone have a wonderful week. And we'll talk soon. Happy 4th as well.